Get ready for your daily dose of WordPress and web development tips, tricks, and insights to help you find success with WordPress. You're listening to WP the Podcast with your hosts, David Blackman and Tim Streifler. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of WP the Podcast brought to you by WPGears.com. I'm David Blackman. And I'm Tim Streifler. Today in episode 660, let's see if I can get this right, Tim. I really screwed it up yesterday. Page cacheability and why it matters for WordPress website page speed. I added a new word, but it sounded cleaner. So, hey. Yeah, so uh, let me dive in here for a second and explain what page cache is when it comes to WordPress. So WordPress is a database-driven dynamic content management system. And what that means is when you load a WordPress page, basically it's going to the database and it's grabbing the most recent version of the page or post or or whatnot. And then it's coming back and it's loading it and it's kind of seamlessly putting it together on the fly. That's a very, very simplified version of what's happening. And when you have a blog post page, that's a feed of all your blog posts, it's going to go in and, and grab the latest posts. So that's showing the latest content. And that's a very, again, simplified version of what's called the WordPress loop. And so the problem is, is that loop kind of takes some time and it can slow down your website. So if you compare a static HTML site to a WordPress site with no enhancements, no optimizations, the static site is going to load way faster than a WordPress site. And so something that uh, programmers came up with years and years ago is page caching, WordPress cache. And basically what it does is it creates a static version of your dynamic page. So when a user visits that page, it'll load the static version so it loads much quicker. And then when you update content, add a new blog post to whatever, it rebuilds that cache. So the next time the, uh, a, a user goes and visits it, it's going to load the new version. But again, it'll be loading the cache version and therefore it will uh, be very, very fast. And so that's generally how uh, WordPress caching works and, and why it it, it matters and, and how it can help speed up your website. And so there's a term called page uh, or website cacheability. And for example, hosting companies like I, I use WP Engine, they actually have an automated way of measuring the cacheability of your site, right? So if you have uh, like a simple brochure style website and not a lot of content, nothing crazy going on, no advanced uh, functionality. Well, your website cacheability will be like 100%. However, if you have an e commerce site, well, there's certain parts of e commerce sites that can't be cached. For example, a cart or a checkout. Uh, stuff like that, or if you have a lot of you know different tools and integrations and stuff like that happening, well, it's not going to be able to cache those things because those things are being measured in real time, and so your cacheability uh, score is going to go way down, and so uh, it's not going to be able to be if it's not able to be fully fully cached. Well, then it's going to slow down the the speed, and so that's kind of generally what it looks looks for uh when you're measuring page cacheability is is what can be cached what's dynamic what has to stay dynamic and so uh, that's kind of what hosting companies look for and uh it's important to keep those things in mind so when you're adding things to your website you're looking at okay well is this something that can be cached uh you know and if not it doesn't need to be there because it, it will slow down your website a little bit um, for example, when you're adding in, uh, you're embedding YouTube videos. Well, those aren't being cached. Those are coming from an external source, YouTube, that's being embedded or iframed onto the page. Well, that can't fully be cached. And that's going to slow down your website a little bit because it has to go and fetch that data from YouTube. So that's kind of a, a simple but very, very common thing that will kind of decrease that cacheability. Awesome. Tim, great episode today, bro. <laughs> I wish I had something to add to it, but. I really don't. I mean, you, you, you've you kind of covered it all and stuff. What I can do for our audience is tell you what an amazing topic we have coming up tomorrow. We're going to talk about five web design resources you should be using. And we're, look, I'm going to throw, I'm going to put it out here right now. 
We are not talking about the common things that you already know about. We're going to give you five web design resources that you probably don't know exist. So make sure you come tune in tomorrow and find out what those five are. Tim, until tomorrow, we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye. We've come to the end of today's episode of WP the Podcast. Join us tomorrow for more daily tips and strategies designed to help you run your WordPress business towards success. Remember to subscribe to WP the Podcast so you can stay up to date with each episode. And don't forget to rate and review us. We'll see you again tomorrow right here on WP the Podcast.